Hi everyone, my name is Lungela, and today I'd like to take you through um, an example on process simulation. The simulator we'll be using is Coco, and the reason I chose that is year in, year out, I keep getting requests from students, especially UNICEF students, um, on assistance with the plant design project. So Coco is open source, so uh, you don't need to pay for it. Um, but there are other simulators like your Aspen and ChemCAD. And the one thing I can tell you from my experience, and I'll show you, I'll tell you about where that experience came from. Um, the basics with Coco um, are almost the same as any other simulator. The only difference you're going to get with Coco and maybe Aspen, for example, is the size of the database. So your Coco has a smaller amount of compounds in its database or smaller amount of um, what is the co compounds and uh, thermodynamic models in this database compared to your Aspen and maybe even ChemCat. And then obviously your Aspen is very expensive unless you're getting it from your university. Um, ChemCat is also quite expensive unless you're getting it from your university. But then Coco, on the other hand, it's open source. And um, should you really want to go into it and use it for more complex calculations either than a simple BTEC uh, project design, um, you can add to the database on COCO. All right, as I said, my name is Lungela, um, and I'd like to be your guide to success, especially in your BTEC course. Um, I graduated with Big Tech in Chem Inch in 2013 from the University of Johannesburg. Um, I have to say I excelled quite well, especially on equipment design and plant design, and this was not by accident at all. Um, I worked as a process engineer in a design firm for five years. And during that time, um, I got all the experience you can reach for. And uh, when I did my BTEC, I had already two years experience in that environment. So I had worked with Aspen. Um, I had done actual design of vessels for real systems. Um, I had worked on the uh, design and construction of a small laboratory um, within the firm. So for me, BTEC was an easy, was an easy, not, oh, I wouldn't say easy because, you know, it took time. You know, you had to give time. Sometimes people think easy is just something that you can easily understand. But it has to do with dedication, it has to do with time. So the time had to be given, um, the discipline was required in order to pass the module. However, design and equipment, plant design and equipment design were uh, my favorites. But enough about me for now. Why am I doing this video? Well, as I said, year in, year out, um, I get a lot of requests for students and from students. And the one thing that I've come to realize is most students have basically no idea where to start. You can put a simulator in front of their eyes. They do not know what to do. And the reason for this is your big tech lecturers, especially on um, off-campus kind of learning situations like your UNISA, they expect you to have the basics. They expect you to know what a property module is. They expect you to know uh, how to formulate the basic mass balance around the system. They expect you to know what a vessel is. So when they give you a guide on how to use COCO, um, it does not then go into the details on what the property package is, uh, how to select the property package, how to do a mesh balance. Because these are things that, you know, even a mesh balance, these are things that you should have done in your, um, in your S levels. So they, they, they don't expect this of you. And this then becomes a problem for most students where they can't even start. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, um, it's, as much as, you know, you could have done better, in your S1, S2, S3, S4, uh, this does not mean that you should be left to die, if I can put it like that, you know. Um, there's still an opportunity to be helped out. And that's why I created this video, to give you guys an opportunity to finish a BTEC so that you can either further your studies or go back to your workplace better equipped to, uh, to do better at work, you know. Um, at the end of the day, the principles that you learn here or the principles that you learn in BTEC, if you do them with an understanding, your eyes will open up. And the good thing about it is once you go back to work with a better understanding, you enjoy your work better. Um, secondly, you perform better because now you understand what you're doing. You're not trying to wing it. 
And the one thing that I like to tell all my friends is, guys, we should not win it in anything that we do. Try to understand things to the most basic level so that when you produce a product, your clients, your employer, your whoever is consuming your product can see that you did not win what you did. Now, process simulation, right? Um, as I said, we're going to be looking at Coco. So I'm going to be touching on flow sheeting, property packages, and um, with property packages, obviously, you're now talking about simulation. You're talking about thermodynamics. Now, thermodynamics simply describes how physical systems would behave over time if left to their own devices. What do I mean by that? You take two, 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 two compounds, you put them in a container, you leave them there, right? Given a specific amount of time, maybe a thousand years, we do not know, you come back, if it's hydrogen and two oxygens, you'll find water, right? We, do, uh, we just don't know when it will happen. But the point is, um, if, the same, if, if, the, if, if at any point in time, during that thousand years, the right conditions happen, right, for those two to actually combine to form water, they will form water. So we as chemical engineers cannot wait that long. It is too long. We cannot wait for a thousand years to create sugar. We cannot wait for a thousand years to create fuel for our cars. We cannot wait for a thousand years to um, to do to, to turn coal into liquid fuels into to steam crude. We cannot wait that long. So what we do as chemical engineers, we create physical gradients and impose them on the systems so that it speeds up the process. So if either you are hitting the mixture or you are agitating it or you are applying pressure, but the point is with an understanding of the thermodynamics itself. For example, you know that if um, we're talking about the Chapalier principles, you know that if there is if there is a decrease in volume for that system, you increase pressure, right? Because a decrease in volume means that it moves towards the, uh, the, 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 the product side. So that's what we mean by um, creating physical gradients. We'll look into that in more detail, especially um, if you then subscribe to my channel or you join my learning group. Uh, we'll go into those details on how these things are actually done in a real design. Um, as I said, I've had that experience. I'm still in touch with my former employers, um, with my former colleagues. Um, these are things that this is information that I can easily expose you to so that you have a better understanding of why we do what we do. Process simulators. Why do process simulation? Right? For a number of reasons. I'm just going to read through this that I found online quickly, and then I'm going to touch on maybe one or two. Right? You've got research and development, process design, uh, production planning, process optimization, operation, training, education, decision making. These are all the reasons why we do process simulation. Now, let's look at research and development, which is a thing that I was mainly in for five years. Because um, when I entered the company I worked for, I was, I was doing a lot of research into Fisher Talks. So I was based in the laboratory that we built from scratch, and I was running data analysis through the so I was running the reactor, collecting data, and then taking the data and then analyzing the data. And at times we had to use um, a simulator like Aspen to see what would happen if we change certain conditions, right? To see what would happen maybe if we heat up the reactor from 210 to 250. What kind of changes would we expect? Sometimes you do this to avoid wasting time. Sometimes you do this because whatever change you want to impose will require a certain monetary investment. So before you go to your boss and ask for 50,000 rand to heat up the reactor, you then test it so that at least you've got some kind of basis on why you want to do what you're doing. Otherwise, your boss will ask you a question, okay, Lungino, why do you want me to spend 50,000 rand? And you don't have an answer. So process simulations allow you to predict your system before you actually make the changes you want to make change or before you actually go ask your boss for money. <laughs> so, you, so this is something that you, you really want to get a, a grasp of so that it will help you in your own professional path. Before you make any decisions, you are able to back them up with some kind of um, you know, scientific process behind it. Now you've got process design, obviously, um, before you build any plant, you want to go through a simulator, you want to see how things are going to look, and then your simulator will give you an idea of, you know, how, how the flows are going to go about, how the pipes are going to be sized, and things like that. 
we've got production planning and then the other one that maybe let's touch at a bit is yeah the training and education which is what we're doing now so to get started with Coco, what I decided to do, I went out and looked for an example um, that will just allow us to be able to switch on Coco, set up a basic property module for that system, and run our first simulation. That's what I want us to do today. And with that alone, I hope that you it will give you that motivation you need to get started. I know some of you are probably running behind on your design project, and I hope this video will help you get started. So let's do this, getting started with simulations. So as a first example, um, this example that I found, they were looking at how, how your thermodynamic models can be blamed for mistakes in a calculation. So what this example ended up leading to was the design engineer at that point was, or the, the, the plant engineer, the person on the ground was, was looking at the system and saying, but guys, this is not what you predicted. You said X amount of butane would report or X amount of hexane would not be in stream X and now it's damaging our lines because of the acrosivity or something like that. So what they were trying to do with this example is they're trying to say, no, 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 let's go back and look at it again. So they did the simulation, ran it twice or so, put in different thermodynamic models and so, hmm, there's nothing wrong there. When they went back to the system, they found that there was entrainment. Um, an entrainment plate was there that was causing that was causing an incorrect um, an incorrect uh, running of the system. So therefore, the thermodynamic model uh, was far off. The prediction was far off because of the physical uh, structure itself. But then, what I want us to look at is I want us to run this thermodynamic model. Uh, no, no, I want us to run this example. Um, using n-butane, n-pentane, and n -exin. And then what I want us to do is I want to run it in two, two ways. One, it's going to be through um, TEA, which is one of the modules in, um, in COCO, and also CAMSEP. Now, um, I would prefer that you do your own research on what TEA is and what CAMSEP is. I don't want to go into those details now. But what I want us to do is get started. Let's do this. All right. So first things first. Um, before you even go into the into the simulator, I want to check that you have all your information, right? So this then says that as an example, you have consider stabilization a stabilization drum, which is a flash drum, uh, as shown in figure in the figure below that operates at two bar and fifty degrees. Good. Um, and that has a speed composition that can be represented by the following. So you've got temperature, you've got pressure, and you've got um, you've got your composition. Um, this system is well defined. Everything you, you've got everything you need to run this system. All you would need to do now is um, you would need a flow rate, um, but for now we can just use a basis. So we're going to choose a basis of 100 uh, kilomoles per second, and we're going to use that as our flow rate. Um, in certain cases, especially your BTEC design project, what they do is they give you the flow rate of maybe P2. Right? Of maybe, uh, let me just point that point with my finger there and you won't be able to see. They give you a flow rate of P2. Now, what they want you to do is they want you to first do a basic mass balance um, and then get back to the flow rate of P1. You need to do this because your, your, your process simulator will, will, not, will not necessarily guess for you um, what came up? You can set it to do so. It's it, it's a bit of a, it's a bit more complicated. You can you can do you can uh, especially I know with CAMCAD CAMCAD um, when I use it you are able to um, to specify certain streams and it guesses certain streams for you. But in simplicity, what you would then need to do is you would need to do your own mass balance. So if I had given you that P2 has a flow rate of 30, um, for example. Um, what you would then need to do is you then have to work backwards, do a mass balance, and go back to um, to finding P1. Hopefully, uh, I'll see you again, those of you who find this video interesting. And if you do have challenges with setting up a mass balance, um, I can help you with that. The next thing we need to do um, before I, I like before going before even going into the simulator itself, I like having all my information in one place. 
So the next thing that I want us to find is what thermodynamic model are we going to use? So I went online, very simple online search on Wikipedia. I know for a design project you're not supposed to use things like Wikipedia. So you're going to have to do more research on this. You're going to have to do, uh, and you're going to have to go deeper into uh, into articles um i'll even refer you to some places where you can get very good articles and very good books um it's called that library it will give you very very good uh, books and then you can also go to research gate where you need to register and they need to confirm that you are doing research as well there you can get a lot of good articles as well some free some you need to pay so i went and found this property property package decision three um, you won't be able to see well here, but then if you'd like me to send you a copy of this presentation, uh, at the end of this presentation, I actually have my email address there. So, and then you can also comment and at the on the comment section on the um, on the YouTube video. Uh, then I'll be able to send you this uh, presentation as well. So, as you can see here, the first question you have to ask yourself is: your compound polar or nonpolar? Um, if I'm not mistaken and I remember my chemistry well, nonpolar, I think, are things like your alcohols and blah, blah, blah. I think the, uh, it has to do with uh, polarity and things like that. So if I'm not mistaken, we're dealing with a uh, nonpolar system because it's hexane and butane and pentane. And it's real compounds. So let's do this using Peng Robinson. And then maybe to test out our system, we can even try uh, red lip Kong US, right? Um, so this is the system we're going to use. Tang Robinson and red lip. Let's see. Let's go to our simulator and play around a bit. So I'm gonna now. I'm gonna try get out of here now, uh, so we can go directly to our simulator. Okay. So first things first. There's something here that's presenting us. Oh, I have to get out of here. As I said, there's my email address, lungile at sakantemi.co.za. Drop me, drop me a, uh, an email. Um, I'll send you a PDF version of this presentation. Um, I'll be happy to also um, send you a free video on setting up a complete, um, complete flow sheet with, uh, a, with a absorber, a reactor, um, just just to get you started, you know, um, this is my gift to you, uh, and hopefully it will help us build that relationship. So let's get into our simulation, and I just want to go back to that slide where we had our uh, simulation information. First things first, we're going to open Coco. So if Coco is installed on your system, uh, the moment you open it, you'll see up here there's recently used, uh, recently added uh, icons. We are looking for coffee. So this this these icons that you see here are what make up cocoa. Um, and the um, the flow sheet interface is found here um, on the one return coffee. So I'm gonna open coffee and while that opens, I'm just gonna do a little dance. So I can say uh, just gonna check out my time. Uh, I want to make this too long. Um, I know you guys are busy. I know um, most of you guys are juggling work and you're juggling studies, you're juggling other subjects. I know it can be quite frustrating. Hence, I did this video. You know, it just felt like it's quite, it would be quite important to you know, get you started. So the first thing I want to do is I'd like to show you um, what would happen uh, what's the first thing you would see in an event where you haven't set, yet set up a property package? So there's a stream, stream one. Um, let's go back. Let me show you again how to get that. So up here, you've got a toolbar, right? That right there says insert stream. So there are two ways to insert stream. As it says here, I think that's control L or control I. Let's try that. Control I allows you to create a stream, right? The other way is to click on that icon, uh, click on it. Once it's highlighted, you will be able to create a stream. And then finally, the other way is to go to insert and then again stream. And if you click again, 
you be able to create the stream. So one thing I want to show you now is these streams are empty and you won't be able to do anything with them because as you can see here, there are no compounds in here, right? There is absolutely nothing. You can specify the pressure, you can specify the temperature, you can specify the molar flow rate, but you won't be able to do anything else. And in order to do that, we then need to go to the thermodynamic property. So let's start with cancer because I think it's uh, probably the most complicated, but I don't know. You'll see for yourself. So you hit configure, and then this um, window will come up. And then you go add. And then, as I said, we're going to start off with the Chemset Property Package Manager. You go select. You hit new. And the Chemset has opened up. Let's call it Example. Example simulation. And we go into components. Um, all right. We've got N hexane. All right. We've got N butane. All right. And lastly, we've got N pentane. Happy? Everyone happy with how we put it? I know you cannot answer me right now because this is not a live video, so let me not ask such stupid questions. Uh, next, we're going to go to properties. Um, okay, so this is where you select your thermodynamic model. So, K value. For this one, um, let's select the most simplest. Uh, K value, let's select the most simplest, let's select the route law. So route law will use I do gas law, I do solution. So that's the easiest you have. Um, if you remember chemistry, I do gas law, uh, that is P V is to NR, NRT, and then your ideal solution, that one I completely forgot, but you can go back and check it yourself. Um, and then the vapor pressure, let's do something familiar here as well. Let's use Antoine constant. I'm sure you remember those as well. And then lastly, your enthalpy, that's where we're going to take our pen Robinson. And then, as you can see, once you've done that, your system then tells you that everything is now defined. So we're going to close that. The moment you close it, you will see it says, do you want to save the current input? Say yes. And then the next thing you will be asked is, it should be coming up now, is if you want to assign property package to the default stream type, and you say yes again. And then let's close that. Now, if we now double click on the stream, you will now see that you have your components. So now we're going to put it in our proper our our, our um, input input variables as given. We had a pressure of two bar. Uh, our temperature was given in degrees. So you click here. It just where it says uh, degrees or bars. That's where you click to change. And if I remember correctly, there was fifty. And then now we just need to come back and check our. I just want to confirm. Uh, so N butane, you've got 50 more percentage. N butane, 50. N pentane, oh, this is the most, this is the most. Sorry about that. This is the most fraction, so it's not supposed to be 50. Not 5. Remember that uh, your your mole fraction, you divide the percentage by 50. And then N pentane, 
0.3, and then it will calculate the other one automatically. And then we set kilo moles. I like kilos, I don't like moles, they're too small for me. Then let us assume two, two moles. And then what you will see is everything else is now well defined. Now let's go back to our process. So let's delete the ones that we don't need for now. All right, and then let's put in our um, stabilization drum as we call it that time. Um, I'll call it a flash drum. Uh, let's see, let's go through, let's do this. Let's have a bit of fun with this. Um, the reason I'm doing this is just to show you the different ways of setting up your your uh, system. Again, when we hit, we're gonna hit edit unit operation. We want a fresh from the liquid, and you hit OK. And then switching to flood flash operation will lead to a loss of all column specifications we don't mind what we wait for that um again to give you more reason why i'm really doing this the other thing I noticed, there are videos on YouTube on how to set up a simulation, but again, I felt when I went through them myself, uh, they, they assume you know the basics. And for most people, that becomes a bit of a challenge because the uh, tutorial will then say something and be like, but I, I don't even know what a property package is. How am I, gonna, how am I going to select which one to use? or I don't even know how to do a basic mass balance. You, you've assumed I know you've done your mass balance. So the reason why I'm starting this series, educational series, is to come down to the student level, as I said, and hopefully be able to help more people. So as you can see, we had defined everything. I mean, we've defined our, our components. Let's look at operation. We said it's a flash drum, no funny business there. You know, just need to come to the flash text. So flash type, um, we can do pressure temperature, pressure vapor flow, pressure liquid, uh, pressure heat duty, pressure vapor flow. Let's do pressure, or because we set stabilization term, let's say no flash. What do I mean by that? We're not changing any conditions. We're just leaving it as it is. Um, it's asking for pressure in Pascals. Um, we know our pressure was too bad. So that's 200,000, and we know our temperature, and it wants it in, it wants it in, uh, the system wants it in Kelvin, so let's do 50 degrees, just going to unlock my phone quickly, you know, being lazy sometimes, um, but it's not being lazy, uh, Einstein said it quite well sometimes, that why, why should you get, why should you store vast amounts of information in your brain while you have calculators? So that's, <laughs> excuse me, 323.15 Kelvin. 323.15 Kelvin. And once you do that, you can click anywhere, uh, you will see that your system is now well defined. So it had no flash, so the, 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 the drum does nothing. So basically, all it does is just a big drum that takes in a stream and then it allows it to naturally separate itself. That's what we mean when we say no flash. So you are not putting any changes to the system. You are, as you saw, even even initially the streams the streams themselves are already separated into vapor and liquid. So what we do now is we are not imposing any further changes to the system. We are saying that we are now allowing the vapor to go its way and the liquid to go its way by giving it enough space via the flash drive. So we're now going to close that. We're going to say yes. And if all goes well, the icon should change as well. Now we've got our simple flash down. Yeah, we're going to now put in 
And then finally, let's put in our output strings. The top will be a vapor. Um, this will be very, this is quite natural. Um, you do expect your vapor to go to the top and your liquid come out at the bottom. All right. So should our system be well defined, you will see that that little run button there is ready to solve. If you want to look at it again, you go to flow sheet. And if you click on flow sheet, you will see solve there. And again, it says if you press F5, it will solve as well. Let's solve our system. I get bored with that the reason for that little bench. Ooh, what happened? Something failed here. Uh, auto flash failed. Flash operator might not uh, recognize and able to determine flash type. All right, maybe we are forced to determine a flash type. Um, I didn't want to do that, uh, but yes. Sometimes we don't get what we want. And well, anyways, um, at least today you're able to see uh, if you if you get a funny message, you might immediately panic. Uh, but it seems to have solved our system. It seems to have solved. Uh, yeah. So Chemsep has solved the system, uh, but it seems Kofi Kofi does not recognize the uh, what do you call this? Does not recognize the solution. So. What we will do is let's select one of the, um, we're gonna do present temperature. So as you can see, I did it say the system is all defined. So we've got two bar, which is 200,000. And then solve that, so yes. And let me close that. And the system should be ready to solve again. And then we go, I'm really not in the mood to be embarrassed by this system again. Ha, ah, there we go. So when your system has completely solved, as you, as you will see, is every stream will be green. So um, what I think happened there was Chemsep, Chemsep as I, I'll show you now, there's, a, there's actually a separate icon for Chemsep. So Chemsep um, has its own system. You can run Chemsep on its own. You can run Coffee on its own. So as you saw, Chemsep was happy to give us a solution but coffee was not. It wanted us to specify the flash drum server. And maybe I can understand that because it's a flow, sheet, flow sheeting system. So uh, probably did not like the fact that it had a flash drum that was underspecified. And then with those results, we can put in a stream report. Again, uh, I think I did that too fast. I apologize. You come to insert and then stream report. And when you do that, when you click, let's click next to the system. And let's take all of them. It's not too big, so there's no need to leave out some of those things. And then I just want to confirm that it's in more fractions. Yes, it's in more fractions. And you say OK. And there we go. We've got our nice results in there. So um, this system is saying that we will have uh, in the vapor stream, we'll have 51% of n butane and we'll have 10% NXN. So this is something they'll probably, they, they, will, they will probably, in, in, a, in a design problem, this is something that will be given that the designer, the, 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 the uh, plant owner or the operator will say, uh, hi, process engineers, please design a vessel for us that will, um, that will separate uh, hexane out of our stream. Hexane is really, really damaging our up, our our downstream processes. We do not want it there. It's causing a lot of erosion. Blah blah blah. Whatever the case is. So you, as a design engineer, will then run it on um, will run it on your simulator, and you'll see. Okay, if I'm at 50 degrees and at two bar, I should be able to get separation of hexane with a simple. Um, Flash drum using um, 
using uh, vapor liquid equilibrium. So with that, with the basic simulation. So what I want us to do now is I want us to quickly do one where we use TEA instead of uh, chemsex. So let's go new. Now we've got a new flow sheet. I'm going to run through this quite quickly. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Um, I'll be happy to go through it with you personally. Uh, I just want to keep this video to at least around 30 minutes so that we do not end up having a huge video and, you know, it becomes a bore. Um, you know, they use simple flash. Where are you, flash now? Where are you? There you go. Again, it's the same thing. It's just that this one comes from, um, this one I took directly from uh, the coffee the coffee platform instead of going into the uh, cancer platform. So what I want us to do here is just to compare the results to see what happens when we use the CAMSAT uh, interface as compared to the um, uh, TEA property package. So again, we're going to go properties. Um, I'm going to go add. Next, you go to TEA. Select. For the TEA has some other property packages in them. Let's do our own new thing. Uh, let's call it example 2020. Description. Uh, separate. And using VL, simple VL, using simple VL, simple vapor liquid. As you can see, this one is so much easier, you just go solve by 10 of reasons. And again, as you said, we're going to try um, uh, Kong as well and see what that gives us. So you've got MBT, come on, come on, we don't want to waste time. And then we've got an hexane. Come on, come on. And then we've got an pentane. Okay. okay. And please, as you can see, this one is much faster. Um, reason being, it's already built into the system. And then let's specify our stream one. Uh, again, we want two bar, uh, 3.15 is the most mistaken. Um, and then more fraction, MBTAIN 0.5, PENTAIN 0.3, and the one will cut it itself. Again, I'm a kilomoles guy, and we're gonna have two kilomoles. And you'll see that the system is now well defined and it's ready to run. Let's go specify our flash gram. Edit. Um, do you want the pressure drop? Yeah. Let's just use I have a small pressure drop of 10,000. Uh, no, let's keep the conditions the same. So uh, then the specific. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this one will allow us to do a uh, a simple. Hmm, we have more interesting options here. We'll actually come back to this, but I'm just gonna run it because it seems it's ready now. When we do run, it's now finished. Insert stream report. Let uh, me put in all of them. And the answer that we have now is now you have 60% and 11%. If you remember with the 10 set, you had 10 point, 10, 10, 10, 10 point 8% and 61% between. So it's a small difference, but as you can see, there is a difference. And then just for interest sake, let's change the property model to, um, 
to Suez. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, but anyways, as long as we're getting result right. So Suez Redlik Kwang. Let's reset this calculation and see what happens. All right, let's run it again and see what Redlik Kwang gives us. Um, so Redlik Kwang says 11.4. We have 60.8% and now it's 60.1%. So as you can see, we're doing something right. Let's try, let's try and break the system a bit. You know, the best way to learn sometimes is by breaking the system. So um, let's say you want to answer yourself the question, did we do the right system? So if we had gone the polar way, we would be using NFTL, right? So let's see what happens if we choose NFTL. Uh, try to break the system. So let's go. And by the way, um, this is one of my, well, I've learned a lot of things by time, by breaking the system. What do I mean by that? I believe in doing things practically. So when you want to learn something, do it. Do not wait for the theory. Do take the theory, understand it, but you learn more by actually doing it on the ground. So let's go NRTM and see what it says. Setting a different profit model with a set of calculations, okay, proceed. And then the model cannot be used without modification, proceed. As you can see already, it's giving us a lot of problems. Uh, and that is because it's not supposed, it's not the one. Uh, uh, our little guide out there told us, you can go in and do the configurations um, and try to make it ideal. But again, that will just make you go crazy and waste your time. And yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed our little introduction. Um, just gonna go back to our little presentation and see if I owe you anything more. Um, because at the end of the day, this I'm doing for you, it's not for me. So I've uh, introduced myself, you know who I am, as I said. Um, I've worked in the plant, in the chemical, in the design uh, environment for about five years. So I do know a bit of what I'm talking about. Um, the reason I created this video is I felt like, you know, year in, year out, I do get um, students that are asking me for help. Uh, and, you know, I felt, I, I felt like, you know, it was time, it was time to formalize this and, you know, try to bring it out there to the world so that more people get helped and the more people can find me and others like me. You know, I hope this video encourages other chemical engineers as well to do things like this in disciplines that they understand more than I do. Um, I know deep thermodynamics is not my level, it's not my, my forte. I know I won't play around there. Um, the medical methods, hmm, not my playground, but simulations, mass balances, you know, these are things that I do. I enjoy them quite well. And, um, and you know, that I, let's leave it there before I babble too much. Next, this is where we looked at flow sheeting, property packages. I just gave a brief uh, understanding of what thermodynamics is and why, why we would want to do process simulation. Um, this is our example. Uh, this table, this uh, tree here shows you how to select the property model. As I said, do send me an email to lungila at strakanfeni.co.ca and I'll be glad to send you a PDF of this presentation. Um, I'll also send you a free copy of a PDF guide on selecting uh, property packages. Um, uh, again, as I said, if you want an, if you want access to articles, books, you can go to zlib.org. Um, but then also, uh, I'll be happy to actually after this probably tomorrow I'll do a video on setting up a full complete flow sheet on uh, cocoa, and hopefully um, we'll, we'll we'll get to show you more information more. Uh, give you more details on how to do how to set up a simulation. Uh, as you can hear, I'm I'm out of data. I'm out of talk data. <laughs> I don't have any more words in me. So I think we'll end it here for today. Um, I hope this video was worth your while, and I hope to meet uh, some of you in the near future. Thank you very much, and yeah, good luck with your studies. 
Um, again, it might look difficult um, from where you're sitting now, but get started. And I hope this video gets you started. Thank you very much.